have spoken many times now on the fact that our modern human ancestors on many occasions interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans, as you know, this is very evident in our DNA. I even created a video around the start of this year where I looked into the first known hybrid individual. She is known as Denny and she was a young woman with a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father. But there has been a new study into hybridization during the late Pleistocene, which was conducted at the University of Tübingen in Germany. The results of that new study has been published by Nature. My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to look into what fossils can reveal to us, you know, uh, about the hybridization that occurred with early humans during the late Pleistocene in Western Eurasia. In the past, human evolution was seen as a series of adaptive differences in behavioral, biological and physical characteristics until we Homo sapiens emerged and replaced all other human species. But as more research has been done into the human evolutionary timeline, we are learning that the human evolutionary timeline was far more complex than previously thought. Not only has the discovered archaeological and fossil evidence shown that all other human species underwent their own behavioral, biological and physical complexity, but now, due to paleogenomic work, we finally understand that some of these complex changes that occurred in the other human species eventually contributed to our own genetic makeup. If you hear a cat meowing, that is my cat. Yes, she meows. This is what she does. We also now know from paleogenetic evidence that hybridization occurred multiple times in our species historic timeline. This hybridization resembles a network or, you know, braided streams instead of the branches of a tree. Branches of a tree are going one way and then end, while a braided stream forks and comes back forks and comes back. Our genetic makeup that has been crucial to our survival and success as a species that's able to adapt to changes in the climate, able to adapt to live in nearly all corners of the world and you know more. So when we are investigating the impact of something as big and important as hybridization it is essential to use more than one line of evidence. As I have mentioned more than once on the channel, ancient DNA is incredibly rare and oftentimes not well preserved, especially in Southeast Asia and the African continent. Heat and humidity are two factors that are known to break down DNA much faster. This leads to scientists often not being able to use ancient DNA in their investigations of hybridization which means that oftentimes they need to look into other characteristics of the skeletons to recognize a possible hybrid. So as you can imagine, recognizing possible hybrids in our evolutionary timeline can be vital for understanding our complex evolution and what it is that makes us human. So this latest research was conducted at the University of Tübingen by Professor Katharina Harvati of the Senckenberg Center for Human Evolution and Paleo Environment, together with Professor Rebecca Ackermann of the Human Evolution Research Institute at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. So the research study looked into the impact of hybridization by the use of fossil skulls and the identification of potential hybrid individuals in the past. So the fossils that were used in this latest study were from ancient humans from the Upper Paleolithic that used to live in Eurasia, dating back to approximately 40,000 to 20,000 years ago. Also, yes, hi, say hello to the cat. My remaining cat now because my other cat had to be put to sleep. But yeah, let's not think about that. Continue with the video. Thankfully, some of these fossilized remains still had ancient DNA, which helped in the research as they revealed Neanderthal ancestry within their genes. And this showed the recent interbreeding with the Neanderthals. This actually helped the investigation into the importance of hybridization when knowing that some of these skulls had mixed with the Neanderthals and 
These hybrid skulls were then compared to skulls of non-mixed Neanderthals, early modern humans from Africa and recent modern humans. So there were three regions of the skulls that were most looked at for this study. The mandible, the brain case and the face to look for the telltale signs of hybridization. So these telltale signs might be things like dental abnormalities or unusual sizes or morphological characteristics that are intermediate compared to Neanderthals or modern humans. Most signals of hybridization were evident in the brain case and jaws instead of the faces. So the researchers looked into the individuals with known genetic backgrounds and they considered whether the hybridization of the skeleton matched the percentage of Neanderthal ancestry. So what they found was that the hybridization did not necessarily match the percentage of Neanderthal DNA. That was their conclusion, which actually suggests that the presence of certain genetic variants is most likely more important than the overall proportion of Neanderthal DNA in their ancestry. Of course, hybrid status should be confirmed using the genetic data when possible. But there's also a need for more researchers looking into fossils and combine multiple lines of evidence to identify hybridization in the fossil record. Therefore, these identification hypotheses need to be tested because they could eventually lead to new discoveries. So there are a lot of other organisms ranging from simple plants to mammals that have hybridization that's known to produce evolutionary innovation. This also includes outcomes that are novel and diverse. So approximately 10% of animal species produce hybrids. This includes, for example, bovids, bears, cats and canids. But, you know, hybrids are also known in primates, which are our closest relatives. There have been hybrids found in baboons, for example. So when hybridization occurs, it can lead to new variations and create new combinations of variations, which can, you know, facilitate in particularly rapid evolution. And this is important when looking at new or changing environmental conditions. Hybridization most likely played a huge role in the advantages that modern humans had compared to other human species. They most likely gave us genetic and anatomical features which led to our species being the most resilient of them all, and therefore the only human species left to roam the Earth. So I personally think that without hybridization, our species would have disappeared just like all the other human species that disappeared. But that's my personal opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. With that said, you have reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, or click a link in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and all my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. You'll be seeing a lot of pictures from my tour in Egypt and I will see you in the next video because my cat is on the litter box and she's making a lot of noise. Bye guys!